Yo, what's up, dudes? <laughs> Like you can't end that without going into that. What's up? Check out the new axe. This is a Fender American Deluxe HSS Strat in aged cherry burst. Let me let me let me come a little closer. You guys see that there? Pretty cool. So, um, the first time I saw one of these was when, uh, we had the first reunion. I had never seen one in the flesh before that. Only, um, you know, online or whatever. And, uh, one of the guys had one. I was like, hey, you know, that's a pretty nice Strat. So, his was three singles and had the S1, so it was a little newer. This is a single, single double. With the noiseless pickups um, uh, for singles, uh, so you know, and they sound like a strat, you know. Um, so I was like, wow, that's actually really nice. I love the chrome um, logo. That's like one of the first things I noticed was. The chrome logo on his, so I was like, "Hey, man, that's pretty, that's pretty sweet." And of course, he had the locking tuners, you know, like this has. Uh, later on, this is a four, but this is a two thousand one. Later on, they 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 added like a cut here, and um, this is an ash body, from what I can see. That looks like ash all day long, um, but I think they do ash and alder. Uh, it looks like to me like a mint green pickguard. And um, it's your standard deluxe style uh, whammy bar with the modern uh, saddles, and I think the same thing they use on the on the American standard. And it has the spin forever, uh, you know, uh, bar that just pops in and has the little notch at the bottom. Oh, pretty cool. Um, and then these saddles are normally stainless, but these have been replaced with Graftech saddles. Whoever owned this before. Me. And, uh... Th so these run... What are they, like $17.99 new? Something like that? I usually see them like $14.99, $15.99. I remember looking at them after he'd come over with his. And I'm pretty sure they were like $15.99, $16.99. I think eventually they went up there around $17.99. But now Fender, they're sort of all over the place. They might even be cheaper now. Who knows what's going on with them. But at any rate, that's what I remember them being at. And used, they were like, really like $9.99 and $10.99. Those were the two big, like 1000 bucks and 1100 That was pretty standard for most of the uh, deluxe models. Um, so this one was, uh, now these older ones I see as low as 900 like 899 Pretty standard. But really, not much below that. Occasionally, seven ninety nine, but that's pretty rare. So when this showed up at six forty nine, I like jumped right on it. And I, you know, I had a gut feeling at the time that something was wrong with it because I think they had the condition as either good or fair, and um, it looked beautiful in the photo, so I was like, what's wrong? And I found out what was wrong. There was a giant gash in the back of the neck. But not down into the wood. It just was sort of chipped off. You could see like a like a dent at the bottom of it, you know, when you're looking at it from the back. Um, I, I think I have a picture with a little dime next to it to put, to put the size in context. And if you, if you look at the lower right of that, you can see the, uh, the I think, where the dent occurred and just sort of flaked off. You know, that chunk of finish. So, <clears throat> when I tried it out in the store, um, you know, and that was supposed to be with a case. And it was on tax-free weekend. So, uh, my state runs a tax-free weekend once a year. And it was tax-free weekend. So, no tax, shipping, and 649 
um, and came with a case. They forgot to send the case, but Qatar said he gave me a brand new Roadrunner case, which I looked up online. They sell for $119. I asked for a Fender case, but didn't have one. So uh, they had like a used one, but I didn't want that. I wanted a new case. So I'd rather take the new Roadrunner. Uh, works fine with the guitar, um, you know, so um, I got no problems with it. Anyway, um, so I get the gash. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is up with that? They're like, I don't know. So when I was playing it in the store, I actually didn't really notice it a ton because it's like right in that spot where I don't actually have my hand against the fretboard all that much. I sort of wrap my thumb around. And I have my the my bottom here, but it this slightly over the top of the crest of the back. I don't really touch there a ton, so I have to say when I was playing in the playing it in the store, I said, you know, I might be able to live with this, but when the the, the times and it was occasional, I would hit it. I got to admit, it was super annoying. <laughs> so I said, this is something up with which I will not put. And uh, I looked online for for filling, and there's a great Stu Mac video. Where the guy uses, um, and I had heard about this before, um, but uh, super glue, right? You use super glue to fill all kinds of little dents. So I tried it on one of my other Ibanez guitars that had a pretty big dent, and it was nice and flat. And boy, that worked out great. That was stunningly awesome. And I said, okay, let's try it again. We'll try it on another one. Again, pretty amazing results. So I said, all right, I'm going in. I'll try it on this one. And um, uh, I, I taped it up, and I, uh, I, you have to throw, like, a layer down, let it dry another layer, and, uh, and so forth, until, you, you know, you, you really build up a little mound. And then you just take a, a razor, and, well, you can go look up the video, the Stumac video. You just take a razor and uh, shave it down. Uh, you got to dress the razor up a little bit. You've got to prep it. But um, once you do that, it works great. And then you just do a little sanding, and then you buff it out with some polishing sticks. I have a full set of polishing sticks. And um, from, I think, 1,500 grit to 12,000 grit. And uh, this thing is like glass. <laughs> this might be the, the silkiest neck I have now. Because I went around, and any tiniest little dent, I just filled it in. And then I just lightly sanded it. you got to be really careful because if you really lean into it, you'll just take the finish down to the wood, and you do not want to do that, right? You just want to just clean up the surface, right? You've built up this stuff, and now you just want to get that surface flat again. So it's a very light touch that you use, you know, on this. And that's it, man. It, 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 it's, like, amazingly awesome. <laughs> so I really, a little bit of... Um, you know, uh, nerve, right, to do it, because you know, if I screwed it up, um, but I couldn't really see, after I did the first couple, I said, there's no way I'm going to be able to screw this up. I, it, at the very least, I could sand it down and bring it back. They wouldn't know the difference. I, I pointed out to them the chip in the back. I said, you know, if this becomes an issue, this guitar is coming back, and they said, no, we understand, we get it, and uh, it's totally not an issue, <laughs> after a little bit of work, but, you know, it only took um, about... I don't know, uh, maybe 36 hours to do the whole job. So I started it one day. I just put a cup, uh, like a drop in in the morning, and then I let it go for a few hours, maybe five or six hours. And I'm sure it was dry long before that, but they say the cure is 24. And then uh, I just kept mounting a few more drops in there until I went to the, the last one I did right before I went to bed that night. And then I waited until the next night for my scraping to make sure it was nice and, you know, hardened. And it was. It was like glass. And pff, scraped it down, sanded it up, boom. Good to go. You hear that band who appropriated that song? Kind of, uh... Kind of stole it, not stole it. I'm sure they're paying a um, a uh, a royalty to use it. You know, I'm using um, um, P 
TV revalve. I've been really using this a lot lately. that um, like a straight up 6505 see that's one of the things I just love about this guitar is I can get to you know that blues quack of you know the front pickup but then get that humbucker really makes it much more versatile. So I guess the, the moral of the story is, um, you know, uh, don't, you know, disregard a Mercedes just because it has a flat tire, right? Uh, you know, if you can get if you can get something for a little bit less and it just takes a little bit of work to get it up to par, uh, go for it. Uh, I bought it just because the, of the price, literally straight up price. Um, I had been looking at them for a while, and I knew 649 was, you know, pretty cheap. Pretty rare you see them ever go for less than that. For a deluxe, right? For the American Deluxe Series. So, um, you know, it, it was like awesome, uh, awesome again. <laughs> Kind of take a little closer look at it here. Love that chrome. And that's a uh, aged cherry burst. Let's see if we can find the uh, nice tuners wait a second this is made in ASU what <laughs> yep there it is so I could have flaked out the edge so the edge had a little bit of discoloration I could have flaked that edge out with the uh, with the sort of exact zero but I didn't want to go too crazy because if I really hacked it up, this was going back. <laughs> this was this was going to be a return. So I, I can live with the with the ring. It's the scar to forever remind me, but it's completely, you know, unable to be felt, and that's the that's the key. All right, dudes. As always, thanks for stopping by, and rock on. <laughs>